All right, so this is the, feed, the feeder for a furnace. We have a 15 amp fuse in here, which currently the breaker is not off. This is a non-contact voltage detector. Basically, we can tell that this line is still energized. Right now, we need to replace this assembly to allow for a, a backup system to be attached to the furnace. This is a doorbell transformer. This is the control line going into the furnace. And basically, we are going to be doing some modifications to allow this furnace to function if the grid were to fail. This is an electronic ignition, so it doesn't actually have a pilot light, so when I do this, it's not going to disconnect the pilot, making it so you have to go and reignite it later. Let's see what we got going on in here. Another check because there could be multiple circuits in the same box. It's really easy to. Now, this single gang box here has an open back, and we're going to have to replace it with one that has a closed back so that we can mount it to the stud just to the left of this box here. Now on our outlet you're going to find on one side chrome screws, that'll be for your white wire or neutral, and on the other side you'll find brass screws which will be for your black wire or your hot wire, and in some situations a red if, you have, if you're adding a switch. Green screws for your ground wire. I'm preparing the wires so I can actually um, tighten down the screw so when I tighten it down it's twisting the actual wire onto the screw so it's pointed in the clockwise fashion so it actually doesn't get undone. See how it does that? And now it's just kind of on there nice and tight. Do the same thing neutral
Now this is really important. This furnace requires a minimum gauge of 14. So the plug that I've added is 14. You can't just use an extension cord with a plug on it because the average extension cord is 18 gauge. Not safe. Okay? Okay, so my battery ran out. I'm going to have to show the wires after they're already connected here. I've got all my neutral wires capped together. I've got all my hot wires capped together. And all my ground wires are capped together and grounded to the box. Just got to put the box together and we'll be ready to roll. Looks like all I have left is to go turn on the breaker and test the outlet box. I've got an outlet tester to make sure I've got everything wired correctly. Looks like I do. And uh, yeah, this thing is great. I suggest you get one if you're going to be messing with outlets. All right, well, now I can plug my furnace into or back into the grid, or I can plug it into. Uh, a generator. Alright, let's make sure we've got power going to the core. Got power going to the fuse box. And then the next thing we need to do is go oh, reset the thermostat. Need to turn that thing all the way off because we cut power going to the furnace. And to reset it we have to go to the thermostat and reset that. All right, after a few minutes, your furnace will fire up. Ooh, doesn't take long to get uh, some heat going through that pipe. Let's see. All right, well, not all furnaces are going to look like mine. Uh, this one is from a friend who has a furnace in a basement. He's got the inline fuse with the doorbell um, attached to it. I'm following that line up to the ceiling and I find a wire going to a box for an outlet. This would actually be an easier project than what we just did because all we'd have to do on this is remove the wire going into the outlet box, put a plug on the end of it, add an outlet into the box and plug it in. And that's all it would take to do this one.